We're going to continue on this topic that we started last week of the Holy Spirit and how He brings love, joy, peace, and hope into our lives. And uh, several scriptures that we can uh, look at about this. And let's just um, let's just review for a moment because this is lesson sixteen, I do believe, of our uh, lessons on the Holy Spirit. And we have several more to go, so let's pause for a moment and reflect on where we've been and where we're going in future lessons. Uh, We began the class talking about the deity and the personhood of the Holy Spirit, that the Spirit is a He, not an It, uh, and that He is one, He is equal with God the Father and God the Son. And then we began to talk about the uh, concept of the Trinity and the concept of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, both in us personally, right? And He indwells us as a group, as Christians. He indwells His church. We looked at several uh, objections that people will pose to the indwelling of the Spirit and dealt with those, considered those. We talked about the Spirit as a down payment, that He is the uh, earnest, the down payment of things that are coming, of our salvation that is to come. We spent a couple lessons talking about the Spirit versus law, and uh, I hope that was enlightening to you. The Spirit versus law, or you could say the realm of grace versus law. It's really saying much the same thing. We had a lesson about how to walk by the Spirit. Uh, I don't want it to just be a nebulous thing that we just talk about, oh, let's walk by the Spirit. What does that mean? How do you do that? We, uh, <clears throat> we then started to talk about, okay, if the Spirit dwells within us, what is He doing in our lives? What is His function? What is His role? So we talked here about the sanctification or the holiness that He brings and, and promotes in our lives as we follow Him, as we yield to the Spirit the power that he brings, um, and on the other side of that coin, the, the way that he helps us in our weakness and how he intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. We saw there in Romans 8, this was last week that we looked at that. And of course, the Spirit, <coughs> there, there is fruit of the Spirit that should be born in our lives and evident in our lives love joy peace patience kindness gentleness faithfulness self-control and we asked ourselves the question last week are these things in your life Uh, are they evident within you because if we're yielding to the spirit we're we're following the spirit of god this is what will be produced in us um <clears throat> and so uh, we're going to continue along those lines this evening. But then the question is, where are we going from here? So uh, one of the main things we need to talk about in the future next week will be the Spirit brings unity among the people of God. And then we'll turn to ask this question, what about spiritual gifts? Are they for today? What about miraculous, as we call them, miraculous spiritual gifts? Are they for today? And if not, why not? Uh, What about, uh, you know, there are some that would say there are not even any non-miraculous gifts of the Spirit today. And I don't believe that. But we'll uh, look at some scriptures to show that, uh, as we've seen all along, the Spirit is, He's here to help us. He's here to strengthen us, and He's here to strengthen the church. And so He has given gifts to the church. So we'll spend a lot of time in Acts in the coming lessons talking about, you know, what, what were these miraculous gifts? What is the baptism of the Holy Spirit? All of that stuff. We'll look again at Jesus' teaching on the Spirit. We've been in Paul a lot, talking about what Paul has written on the Holy Spirit. We're going to look at what Jesus has taught. 
And then we'll uh, take some time to look at the teaching about the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. And we may think of some other things, too, along the way. So that's where we're, we've been and where we're headed. Let's turn our Bibles tonight to uh, Romans 5.5. 5. <clears throat> we saw that in Romans 5, the Holy Spirit brings uh, hope into our lives. Hope. Remember in, in Romans 5, Paul was talking about how we can rejoice even in our tribulations, knowing that tribulations bring about perseverance. Perseverance, proven character, and proven character, hope. And then he says this really interesting statement. <clears throat> uh, look at verse 5, Romans 5.5. 5, and hope does not disappoint. Can, can you see why someone might think hope would disappoint? You're going through troubles and trials and struggles in life, and uh, maybe the thought occurs to you, how do I know that God really loves me? How do I know that this suffering means something? How do I know, am I really in a relationship with God? Does He really care about me? Is He really there? And, and talking about hope, you know, we're, we're looking at something that is to come in the future, but sometimes don't we need some help now, some assurance, some comfort as we're going through those trials, some assurance that God is there and He does care and He does love me? You know, that's a role of the Holy Spirit. Look at verse 5 again. And hope does not disappoint because what is the reason hope does not disappoint? What's he say? Right. God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? I mean, I, I know God loves me. I know He's there for me. I know I have this real hope because the Holy Spirit is pouring the love of God into my heart. Now, isn't that an experience? Like, isn't that more than just academic knowledge about something? That's something that, that you experience in your inner being. And it can't be measured. Maybe you can't even explain it, really. But it really relates <clears throat> to what Paul had said that we saw in Ephesians chapter 3. Uh, I pray that you would be strengthened with power in your, in your inner man. Strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner man. And he said, so that you'll be able to comprehend the love of God, the love of Christ, which surpasses comprehension, surpasses knowledge. And I think that's what we're talking about. I, I, I know the love of God. I know that he's there. And it's something that we experience in our hearts through the, through the help of the Spirit. But now I want to caution us about something. Because we're talking about a feeling, we're talking about an experience in the inner being. Do we, though, or should we, should we base our faith on feeling and experience? Is there, is there a, a reason to be a little bit cautious here? Because, again, I think in terms of a ditch on the side of the road. You can get off in the ditch either direction. So the question is, yes, this is an experience in the heart that the Holy Spirit is pouring out the love of God into our hearts, but should we base our faith on our feelings and experience that we have, object, uh, subjective experience? What should our faith be based on? <laughs> yeah, the Scriptures. What is written, right? And part of what is written here is that, yes, God does pour out His love into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. That's real. That's, 
something we, we shouldn't uh, just ignore. It's not completely an academic thing, is it? But the reason I bring this up is that a lot of times you will hear people say things like, um, you know, the Holy Spirit said to me, uh, I heard somebody on the radio, occasionally I'll listen to preaching on the radio, and the guy speaking said, the Holy Spirit told me as I was preparing this lesson, and it was some catchy, you know, quote that he, that he put out there, you know, the Holy Spirit told me this. Is there a danger in that? Russell, you're, you're shaking your head yes. Why is, why is that, how is that a danger? Here comes the mic for you. Um, I, I, I guess I could speak to it a little bit. Uh, I uh, came from a very uh, charismatic background, and um, and I think that um, I, I, th I think that faith has to perfectly marry uh, word and spirit, and uh, in, in doing so, I think it, it acts like uh, a beautiful marriage. I think in, in God's design. Uh, there, there's a balance within us that um, brings together uh, this cohesive image of who he is. Um, and I think of, uh, of a woman who, who might be more inclined to um, a, an, an emotional infatuation, which I think is necessary in a man who's more in, inclined to uh, a, a logical decision. Um, but, but when I think of um, too much of one or the other, I think of uh, volatility, or I think of um, imprisonment. Those are two different words that I think of. Um, but I think this this inclination that you can that you can feel something, uh, it it quickly, um, I think it quickly takes you to a place of questioning the legitimacy of it. I don't know if you've ever been like mad. Um, and there are some really illogical things that you say when you're mad, but I think that goes for any time that you have uh, an intense emotional reaction to a thing. And I think that there is that tendency that if you if you feel like God told you something, um, that's a very uh, first of all that's a very sacred thing, you know. Uh, I don't want to push that out of you know we read that all through the scripture, um, but then you know what's what's to stop what's to stop you from saying something that that contradicts the scripture. There it is. Yes. Um, what's to yes. say something that um, isn't isn't loving or doesn't have joy or peace? Right. Uh, you know, and I and I think too many times we, we want to we want to add to what's there because it kind of gives us a piece of value if we think that we can do right. that. Um, but at the end of the day, I think it's a very humble thing uh, to to be quiet and to listen and uh, just believe what's already spoken. Yes, stay in the word of God. If somebody says, the Spirit told me this, is the Spirit going to give us things in addition to the word of God? Or in, even worse, in contradiction to the word of God? So we've got to match everything up with the word of God. The Spirit, you know, it's like Jude said in Jude 3, it's the faith that has once for all been handed down to the saints. And so to say, well, I received a new revelation from God, that's, there should be alarm bells going off in our minds. Faith um, comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. There you go. Faith comes by the other, hearing. The other thing that you have to be careful about is when somebody says, I heard something, it's their, is it their opinion or are we going by what God says? Right. And uh, that's the tie between the Spirit and the individual. Everybody has a Spirit, but is it tied in with the Spirit of God? Yes, that's the question. And sometimes you'll hear people say things like, well, I, I think God just wants me to be happy. And it's about, you know, I, I think I should uh, leave my wife. I think I should, doesn't God want me to be happy? I feel like the Spirit to is telling me that. No, 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 no. The Spirit of God is not telling you that. That's not doesn't line up with God. That's not coming from the Spirit of God. So we just have to be careful. Uh, I think about Colossians 2, 18. Let me read that to you. A, a caution from Paul here. Colossians 2, 18. 
Colossians 2, 18 and 19. <clears throat> Paul says, Let no one keep defrauding you of your prize by delighting in self-abasement and the worship of angels. Listen to this. Taking his stand on visions he has seen, inflated without cause by his fleshly mind, and not holding fast to the head from whom the entire body being supplied and held together by the joints and ligaments grows with a growth which is from God. Inflated without cause by his fleshly mind. Taking his stand on visions. Well, I saw in a vision, God told me this. I saw in a dream, God told me that. And that's what you're going to take your stand on. Paul says, don't do that. You've got to hold fast to the head. You hold fast to Christ. You hold fast to the word of Christ. Now, having said that, let's stay out of the other ditch, okay? So, uh, does the Spirit of God, well, let, let's establish this. The Spirit of God speaks to us through the revealed God, the Word of God. The Spirit of God speaks to us through the revealed Word of God. But does the Spirit, through that Word that He has revealed, does He help us to comprehend it? Can he do that? Does he help make it real to us? Does he help us to go deeper into the Word of God? I believe all of that. He helps us to do this, but it's not outside of the Word of God. It's not in addition to the Word of God, and it's definitely not in contradiction to the Word of God. Greg. Um, what was this talking about? Reminded me of what Paul in Mike's coming for you. I know. You should know, of all people. <laughs> what reminds me, uh, our discussion right now is when Paul was, he was in Athens. Now, uh, while Paul waited for them at Athens, this is uh, Acts 17, starting verse 16, his spirit was provoked within him when he saw that the city was given over to idols. Therefore, he reasoned in the synagogue with Jews and with Gentile worshipers and in the marketplace daily with those who happened to be there. Um, this is the same chapter where just a few verses prior he talks about uh, these were the, the, the Bereans. Uh, these were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica, Thessalonica and that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. So here they're searching the scriptures, uh, the apostle Paul preaching to them and, and what right. scriptures they had, they're going to the scriptures uh, and this, you know, Paul was certainly moved by the, the Spirit. And then also further in that chapter, uh, in verse 19, um, and they took him and brought him to the Areopagus. Areopagus. Okay, there we go. Saying, uh, may we know what this new doctrine is of which you speak, for you are bringing some strange things to our ears. Therefore, we want to know th what these things mean. For all the Athenians and the foreigners who were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. So a lot of times when people claim to be speaking by the Spirit, that's where we need to be cautious right. and make sure that it aligns with God's Word, you know, this right. new thing. You yeah. know, so the, the whole discussion about this reminds me of Acts 17. Yeah, great point. Does it line up with the Word of God? Uh, and, and, and yes, the Spirit opens our eyes. He enlightens the eyes of our heart. He helps us to comprehend things that are beyond knowledge, as we've seen. That comes through the Word of God. And this hope that Paul's talking about, and the love of God that is poured into the heart, you think that's going to happen if we're not in the Word of God? You think we, that we're going to have the love of God poured into us if we're not in the Word? So, um, just a caution for us. Uh, because and what triggered this was Paul is talking, I think, about a subjective experience in the heart. And this is good. This is, and we know this because it comes from the Word of God. But then to base your faith, to base your doctrine on purely on feeling and emotion, that's very dangerous. So just a caution for us tonight. Any questions or comments about that? Well, that 
baptized into Christ, we see the, the whole, we receive a gift. And the gift is the Holy Spirit. Right. And they think it's a gift from the Holy Spirit, and they think they speak in tongues and do you know, all this gibber jabber. And it's not true. The gift is the Holy Spirit. Right. You receive a gift from God when you're baptized, and that gift is the Holy Spirit. But people try to get into mysterious, mystic things about it. And, right. And it's yeah. So the, the other, go ahead. No, that's right. Oh, the other danger is, uh, as I've seen some brethren go down this road, well, it's all just my intellect. It's all just my ability to understand. There's really no help. And that's, that's a danger, too. So we've talked about that many times. But uh, do you have a thought, Charles? <laughs> I'm just thinking of Galatians 1, 2, where Paul says, even if an angel to, were to preach a different gospel, whatever inspiration you got, it's not going to be contrary to the Word of God right. to begin with. Yes. So just an added thought. Yes, yeah, strong words there from Paul, right? The, anyone preaches another gospel contrary to the one I preach to you, let him be accursed. And then he says it again. So it's a very serious thing. Well, let's turn over to Romans 14. And again, the topic tonight is the love, joy, peace, and hope that comes from the Spirit. In Romans 14, Paul was talking to the uh, the church at Rome and, and telling them, Stop passing judgment on one another. Stop uh, um, judging the servant of another. Um, basically telling them to get along with one another because he says some people will eat certain things and some won't. And they're, here they are judging one another. Some people observe certain days and some don't. He stop, stop looking down upon one another. So that's the context of Romans 14. Then you come over to verse uh, 16. Let me back up to 15. So he's talking about food, and, you know, you can imagine Jews and Gentiles being in the church together. They would have a lot of debates about what we should eat and not eat and so on. He says, For if because of food your brother is hurt, you are no longer walking according to love. Do not destroy with your food him for whom Christ died. Therefore do not let what is for you a good thing be spoken of as evil. Look at 17. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. It's not about what you eat or don't eat or the days you observe or don't observe. What is the kingdom of God about, according to 17? Righteousness, peace, and joy. In what? In who? In the Holy Spirit. You know when people are not at peace with one another in the Lord's church? Fighting, bickering, hurt feelings, bitterness, all of this is going on. Is that coming from God? Is that coming from the Spirit of God? No. There should be peace among the people of God. That comes from the Holy Spirit. There should be joy among the people of God. It comes from the Holy Spirit of God. So if we're walking by the Spirit, as we've talked about, this is what will be born out in us, peace and joy and righteousness. Turn over to Romans 15. I really like this one. Uh, Romans 15, verse 13 Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Don't you like that? May the God of hope. And again, he talks about fill you. May the God of hope fill you. So this is a passive thing for us in one sense. We're not filling ourselves. But God is filling. He's pouring in his love. He's filling us up to the fullness of God. All of these things. It's coming into our being through the Holy Spirit. Uh, 
joy and peace. What is the key here in verse 13 to finding this joy and peace? Which don't we need, by the way, in our lives? Joy and peace. He says, may he fill you with all joy and peace in what? In believing. Yeah, in believing. That's key, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, evidence of growth and 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 moving in the right direction because of the spirit of God. It's a good time of year by the way to look at that, isn't it? We look back on the year behind us. But believing is key. Why why do we not have joy and peace sometimes? I mean, that's what's promised to Christians. And yet, sometimes as Christians, we can't find it. We don't have it. Yeah, doubt. It's in believing that we find these things. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And we all struggle with doubt at times, don't we? But the joy and peace comes through believing. Have you ever heard... um, Maybe someone is is having a rough time and maybe you point them to the Word of God, the promises of God, and it's almost like, yeah, yeah, I know all that, but I need some real help here, you know, for my life. I've had that kind of feeling from people at times, like, yeah, I know all that stuff, and that's not really going to help me. I need some real help. Um, that's, That's not what I need to hear right now. I need some answers. right. That's right. If we would take his promises to heart and believe, trust him, we could find, he could fill us with joy and peace and believing, and we could abound in hope in the middle of the verse, so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So it's not coming from within us. It's not, I'm going to pull myself up by my bootstraps and I'm going to be strong. It's my willpower and my doing. It's coming from the power of the Holy Spirit. And so we see that the Spirit leads us into peace and joy and hope. Bob. You know, about that comment just a little while ago about doubt. How many times have we really personally looked to the Lord and said, like the apostles did, and I think Luke 17, 5 or somewhere, Lord, increase my faith. Increase my faith. When we doubt, we're lacking faith. Yeah. We're, we're, I mean, but how many times have we really seriously, I think about myself, Lord, increase my faith. Yeah. It's a, that's, a, that's a wonderful prayer. I, I need more faith. I need your help. Because we do doubt. Let's not sit here and pretend that we don't have doubts sometimes. And we're not weak at times. Um, but if we would just trust God, we could, we could be filled with these things. Look over at Romans 15.30. <clears throat> Some of the final words here as Paul wraps up this letter, he says, Now I urge you, brethren, by our Lord Jesus Christ, and by the love of the Spirit, to strive together with me in your prayers to God for me. You see how he said the love of the Spirit. I urge you uh, by our Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of the Spirit. Well, how do you take that, the love of the Spirit? Is this the love we have for the Spirit? I think that's a possibility of what he's saying. But I think he's saying the love which the Spirit causes in us, the love which the Spirit causes, gives rise to in us the love that the Spirit creates among the church of God, the saints of God. Um, The Spirit helps us to love one another. The Spirit helps us to be at peace with one another. 
to have joy with one another. And if those things are missing, then perhaps we're not letting the Spirit influence us like we should. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Scott, it goes beyond self. Yeah. Yeah, we, we need to go beyond self and have a love for one another. Mike. I think this is true for a lot of people who aren't believers when you go to the emotions and they don't realize that there are two spirits trying to influence us, Satan and the Holy Spirit. We focus on Scripture and the Holy Spirit. For those who don't, they're very susceptible. And I think when we talk about being discouraged, we fall into the devil's playhouse because emotions and feelings are where he goes for those who don't have faith and don't believe. Yeah, very true. So... If, if anything, in my experience, in what I've gone through with uh, can't believing that I could be saved because he knows me, yeah. that's not the Holy Spirit talking to me. That's Satan talking to me. And I don't have as much of a problem with it as someone who doesn't have the faith and doesn't believe, they fall into that. And I've got, I'm talking about some people that I know who desperately are seeking, but they're going by emotions and feelings right. and not by the scriptural evidence. Yeah. So at least for me, if I start doubting, I, I start thinking, okay, where's that coming from? Yeah, it's a great question to ask. It's, it's, it's not coming from the Holy Spirit. That's right. It's certainly not coming from Christ. And you've underlined really the, the danger of operating solely off of feelings and emotions. Oh, feelings are, I heard years ago, feelings are never right and wrong. Yeah. They're just feelings. Yeah. So we should trust in the promises of God. Absolutely. Trust in his word. Trust in what he has said. And the feelings come too. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, that's what I think Paul is saying. You're, you're going to feel the love of God, experience the love of God. But that's not the ground of our faith. No. And, and to me, the two key words, believe and trust. Right. If he said it, it's true. That's right. Trust him. Good thoughts. Anything else tonight before we wrap it up? I probably owe you at least five minutes back, so we'll quit a little early tonight. Next week, we'll talk about unity that the Spirit brings. You know, you ask the question, why is there so much disunity in the church at times? Well, doesn't the Holy Spirit have a lot to do with that? Uh, I believe he does. We'll look at, did I put those scriptures up for you? I'll give you a preview for next week. The Spirit of God brings unity to the people of God. But if we are not walking by the Spirit, there's not going to be any unity. There's not going to be any peace. There's not going to be any joy. So we will consider that next time. Any final thoughts before we wrap it up? Appreciate you all and your comments and thoughts, and we will see you Sunday.